Okay, in the interest of respecting everyone's time, I'm going to avoid detailing ad nauseum all the different intricacies related to this subject. Many other creators are doing so, and many other creators have a larger presence in the World of Warcraft community than I do, allowing for a much more comprehensive approach with regards to certain developments. When I say certain developments, I mean the Blizzard Cosby Suite, because in truth it is debatable and unknown whether or not the participants in said suite were aware of Bill Cosby's alleged history at that time. For a very brief overview, a recent Kotaku investigation showed with alarming clarity that a group of Blizzard developers, high-ranking developers at that, had used a booze-fueled party suite to network at the BlizzCon convention many years prior. One of them, possibly more, but at least one so far, was using the suite to seemingly prey on attending women, and the room was nicknamed the Cosby Suite during a time when Bill Cosby had been accused, but not yet convicted, of sexual crimes. It's a mess, it's a complete optics disaster for Blizzard, and for Activision for that matter, and it indicates to me that they probably don't want this lawsuit getting to search and discovery. However, like I said, that's not a topic I can speak on with absolute authority, so it's not a topic I will focus on. However, in a broader sense, that situation is very indicative of a wider truth. Activision Blizzard is imploding, and today I want to talk about why. Anyone who follows gaming news in the slightest would be hard-pressed not to know about the California vs. Activision Blizzard lawsuit. It's headline news not just in our own industry, but in mainstream publications and legacy media outlets all over the country. The lawsuit catalogs a multi-year history of abuse perpetrated by numerous separate individuals and alleged by a multitude of separate sources. It remains to be seen what will happen as a result, if it goes to trial, if it gets settled, etc, etc. But in reality, this is a case that has very little to do with an actual court and everything to do with public opinion. What does that mean? Well, for starters, while everyone might be aware of the lawsuit itself, not everyone will be aware of all the responses. This is because Activision Blizzard has indirectly or directly issued not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six publicly visible responses, even in those instances where it was an internal email, but that email was leaked to the public. There was a response by CEO J. Allen Brack, pledging to investigate all issues. There was a response by Mike Morheim, which then got attributed, whether accurate or inaccurately, to Blizzard as a whole. There was a response by Chris Metzen, which also contained a sympathetic tone, and then a response by Fran Townsend, previous administration during the Bush era, with a torture scandal under her belt, which called the lawsuit frivolous and illegitimate. Then there was a response by CEO of Activision Blizzard itself, Bobby Kotick, which was probably the best one so far, but more on that later because there's a hidden fact about that that not many people are aware of. And after that, apparently, departments started kind of going rogue, and Team 2 of Blizzard itself issued a statement saying they would purge in-game assets modeled after one of the guilty parties alleged in the lawsuit. And on it went. The thing is, a lot of these statements contradict one another, especially the one from Fran Townsend, who is also the company's compliance chief compliance officer, and it's become the equivalent of early 1900s firefighting, sort of, where the separate squads would arrive on scene and literally fight each other before fighting the fire while the building burned. It's a little absurd. Now, regardless of where you fall on the topic, whether you believe the charges are just, unjust, accurate, inaccurate, or any other opinion imaginable in this, there are consequences for this. Wall Street and investor sentiment have now priced this into the market. It's not a staggering drop that will see the company go bankrupt, not by any stretch, but it's half a billion dollars in market cap just gone, easily, with a near double-digit decline as a direct result of how this lawsuit is currently going. That isn't going to be ignored, and another fact people might not know, Bobby Kotick, marked in 2019 and probably still as one of the most overpaid CEOs in all of America, only had his compensation plan reapproved by a margin of 54%. That's low. That's very low. The vote was delayed, and it barely passed, which means he's pretty short on friends right now. And the share price is taking a near double-digit downside hit as a direct result of widespread company confusion, indecision, and especially contradiction. Where do we think that leads? Circling around to a previous topic I discussed in my earlier video on the subject, I also now have additional info and sources. A number of them fear some sort of legal recourse should they become known or their stories detailed exactly, but a general summary here. When I was informed that the 800 or so employees a couple of years ago were fired en masse as a way to try and purge these issues from the company, that was most likely accurate. I don't have any sort of smoking gun internal email or anything like that, but what I do have is secondary testimonial now that this was an exact pattern at the company. For instance, Many years ago, at a branch of Blizzard, there was a high-ranking team member who would constantly harass and offend employees. Rape jokes, inappropriate comments, even severely inappropriate behavior at a convention, BlizzCon, where he had a wife and children back home, but then tried to link up with a, a fan who was not underage, but he was 
much older and it was just a really sketchy, really inappropriate position to be in and situation to have unfold at your convention by a senior developer or team member. I won't name this person. They have since departed from Blizzard and seemingly the entire industry, but the pattern was allowed to persist for quite some time. What's worse, according to my source, this individual would weaponize the HR department and fire those that complained about him. This would result in waves of layoffs that were not performance-based or deserved, but purely to squash anyone speaking out about inappropriate behavior. It's an issue long dead. I can't stress that enough. Like, this is not something to circle back around and make relevant once again. It's dead. It's been handled. But it was allowed to persist for quite some time during its day. And it corroborates the pattern of layoff cycles being aimed at removing not only offending individuals, but victimized individuals who are trying to defend themselves. There is no end to the issues. What started as contradictory statements and corporate indecision became employee outrage, and then an open letter signed by currently, I believe, over 3,000 current and past Activision Blizzard workers. The open letter became a walkout, and as it stands, there is almost no active development for World of Warcraft, a game bleeding subscribers even before this controversy exploded, which also happens to be one of the most important cornerstones in Activision Blizzard's portfolio. The thing is, Activision Blizzard under Bobby Kotick is not a dying company. In fact, it consistently reports record revenue and beats expectations like clockwork. During the same year that they fired 8% of their global staff, they had, you guessed it, record revenue. Bobby Kotick might be overpaid and World of Warcraft might be kind of dying, but the company isn't struggling. That creates an interesting contradiction though, because I just said for seven minutes straight that the company is imploding, so how could that possibly be? Simple. Bobby Kotick, with a margin of 54% approval on his latest compensation package, let's remember that, might very well be staring down the barrel of an ousting vote after the street priced in this latest scandal against the company's share price. Blizzard, despite being best known for World of Warcraft, sort of, has numerous other titles in their portfolio, past, present, and future, which will be important to the financial health of Activision Publishing itself. And a company-wide letter slash walkout that has already risen to the number in the thousands, right, 3,000 as of, I think, Tuesday, will affect more, possibly all, of their flagship franchises. This process won't be quick. The social climate now has turned into a drip-fed nightmare for Activision Blizzard, and with media outlets buzzing journalists, significant amounts of journalists digging their teeth in, as well as a long-standing atmosphere of animosity against Bobby Kotick himself by the public, worker treatment, compensation, franchise health, etc., etc., a lot of different reasons, we are going to see a lot of people in the public eye rather happy about attacking the company. Additionally, this process itself will be slow because lawsuits like this always are. As an example, Riot Games, another high-profile game development company, has a very similar active lawsuit right now on file from the exact same California agency. DFEH is suing Riot Games for its bro culture. And what does that sound like? It sounds like frat boy culture that is currently being aimed at Activision Blizzard and focuses on harassment, discrimination, and other types of misconduct. This lawsuit has been ongoing since 2018 and had little to no effect on the company whatsoever. However, one big, very large key difference, it was never even close to reaching critical mass like the more recent case filed against Activision Blizzard. One was a passing story on gaming-specific pages, the other is now kind of a national centerpiece with all the insinuated baggage in tow. However, with all that said, there are a number of different potential outcomes here. For starters, if this lawsuit gets co-opted as an identity politics bludgeon, it will die out rather quickly. If this stops being a unifying issue and becomes a divisive tool for one group to tell another group, shut up and listen to other less privileged voices, that will kill any and all momentum almost instantly. Much of the horrifying material in this lawsuit centers on worker treatment in a general sense, which if true would mean that regular developers are simply being put in a harrowing position of uncertainty, which leads to mental fatigue and degrades the quality of the ultimate product. That is a unifying issue. That should not be the case. And if it is perverted and twisted into some sort of you are white and male, so elevate other voices and shut up, you don't have a right to speak type movement, which happens all too often, it will die. It will be suffocated out of existence because an army divided is an army destroyed. To emphasize this, bear with me, we need to look at exactly how Activision Blizzard is responding to the controversy because it won't exactly mesh with what is expected by most people. In Bobby Kotick's official public response, there is a paragraph which reads as follows. Quote, I have asked the law firm Wilmer Hale to conduct a review of our policies and procedures to ensure that we have and maintain best practices to promote a respectful and inclusive workplace. This work will begin immediately. The Wilmer Hale team will be led by Stephanie Avakian, who is a member of the management team at Wilmer Hale and was most recently the director of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission's Division of Enforcement. End quote. 
But Wilmer Hale is best known right now, at least as far as I could tell, for its relationship with Amazon, while Amazon attempts to crush unionizing efforts in the company. They facilitate and produce anti-union propaganda, and right on their website it says, quote, We provide strategic advice on structuring the workforce, employment law compliance, traditional labor law, business restructuring, unfair competition, Sarbanes, Oxley, Dodd-Frank, and other whistleblower claims, executive employment agreements, and the employment aspects of business transactions. Our emphasis in our counseling and training is on positioning organizations to minimize both the likelihood of claims and potential liability. That's the important part. When we litigate, we do so vigorously and strategically and have a proven track record of excellent results. End quote. So reading just a slight part of that again, our emphasis in our counseling and training is on positioning organizations to minimize both the likelihood of claims and potential liability. Does that sound like we will be on your side, we will make positive changes at the company, or does that sound like we are hiring a firm that protects us against you and minimizes what we have to do in response against you? Furthermore, high-ranking individuals at the firm, such as Laura E. Schneider, are described in the following terms directly. Quote, Ms. Schneider has represented clients in a variety of matters involving unions, including assisting employers with managing strikes and other labor disputes. End quote. Wilmer Hale is a union-busting, anti-strike, liability mitigation powerhouse who has been hired in the wake of a scandal that aims to hold Activision Blizzard liable for a whole bunch of inappropriate circumstances. Their internal response is to hire a law firm seemingly aimed at crushing all of that and say, we hired this law firm to fix the problems you brought us. Something just doesn't seem quite right with that. All of this leads me back to the obvious conclusion. If this movement is co-opted by internal strife and identity politics especially, it will die. Hell, who knows, that might even be a weakness exploited by their now hired legal team. However, if the movement stays unified, it could see possible actual change because all considerations on the table Activision Blizzard is kind of imploding. Doesn't mean they can't turn that around, but it's not going to be an easy process. That's it. If you want to support, there are links down below. Primarily Odyssey, which is a YouTube platform alternative for those interested. Also Locals, it's like Patreon, but better. And you get ad-free versions of all the videos, as well as the audio podcast format. Another YouTuber to check out. Merchandise, other links, etc., etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.